let's proceed, shall we? Now, where we leave off here? Yes, we have a question to answer, a bet to make, so to speak. After surveying the crowd, we've confirmed that uh, we're taking the bet that Athen died first. Athen being the elderly gentleman inside the uh, event hall. Max being the gentleman that our investigative gang just found outside the event hall. It created a bit of a uncomfortable dilemma with the uh, police force. So, about a 73% to 27% vote, which means we're going to be making a, a great idea by a commenter on this post exactly. We're going to be making a bet proportional to that amount. So, Athen died first. Think the old man croaked first? Why? Just because you saw his body first? Or is there a more in-depth thought process? Eh, I don't really care. Let's just keep going. What I really want to know is how much you're betting. Okay, so our current chips are 12. So... That means we can do 12. Which means we're going to round up to nine. And there we go. We're gambling. That's gambling, baby. Now to watch the milk ball spin. Alrighty. Ooh, so next chapter of Laverna's story is locked. So I think we're just going to dive right into... Just gonna go uh, clockwise around this table. Get introduced to things as we get introduced to them. The pit boss. Ah, Panthea. A lot of people have called it an ugly city. It was derided as rotten. Of course, I'm not talking about a national scale. I'm talking about the people who actually live here but wise enough to see all his faults. They looked at how the Duats have taken over the streets. A low crime rate sure as hell doesn't mean crime doesn't happen. They looked at how Olimpo has slowly become a monolith of the culture. Nobody likes a big monopoly swallowing everything else. They looked at how stagnant things have been for the last few years. People can always find things to complain about in their situation. When that happens, they want that situation to change. They complain and they complain and they complain. And they've every right to do just that. It's the right of every person to draw down their luck to lament their fortune. But me? At times like these, I tend to see the beauty of Panthea. No, not the beauty seen from the outside. I could give two shits about how many mansions were built in some forest. Grand and beautiful designs all over the place didn't really match my aesthetics. Honestly, all that stuff just made me more resentful than anything else. I found the beauty in this. The nightlife. The hustle bustle of the city. It was far later than anyone should be at. anybody should be out and about. And yet, look at how many people were out and about. Business, for pleasure, for a mix of both. It was a city of hunger. And hunger, I could respect. Though maybe that's just ego. Because I was probably hungrier than anyone else traversing these dimly lit roads. That hunger was motivating my little walk to a local restaurant. I could see the distinctive sign further down the road. I was getting close. So at this point, I suddenly began to do a mental check of my appearance. I gave myself a once-over on the dim glass of a clothing shop. I was never one who openly cared about my looks. But I definitely cared about my look. When a passerby saw me, the first thing they'd noticed was my flashy suit. A purple blazer with green stripes running down it. I wore it over a purple black over a pure black bottom-up. And 
the thing that kept it all together was the bright red tie. Whoa. My, plans, my pants matched the color palette of my blazer, a bit more toned down. The only part of my attire that looked remotely pricey were my brown loafers. Yeah, it was certainly a look, all right. Maybe it was a touch eccentric. Or to put it less favorably, cheesy. If you really wanted to go for the jugular, it was slimy. But, you know, I liked it. I liked it a lot more than the greasy mop of a wig I called my hair. But not much could be done about that. Pleased with my self-analysis, I turned around and leaned on the glass. Ah, oh, man. It was times like this I wish I smoked. I mean, I was happy with my choice not to. Those terrible things to your lungs. And I plan to live a long life. Still, there were certain points in my life I desired exactly what cigarettes provided. I was pretty certain that if I was a smoker, I'd be taking a long drag right about now. Instead, the most I could do was take a deep sigh. Not nearly as fun. So then, did I want to go ahead with tonight? My hunch was right, and it tended to be. This would be the night that things really went, in right, really went into high gear. It was already in pretty deep in Panthea. To pull out now would be a massive waste of time and resources. Not to mention I'd be giving up the reason I came here in the first place. But the alternative... People were fearful in Panthea. For a reason, it was a dangerous place. I wasn't scared of the Duats, or something like that. Every indication showed that they were your typical gangster organization. Powerful, but I knew how to work around them. So that if not them, then who? What? Like it or not, the Duats had carved out a pretty solid monopoly of crime here. There weren't really a lot of other threats that I could see. That just meant I couldn't see whatever was on the th whatever other threats they were there were. And that was scarier than anything else. I had been to enough of these broken cities to already tell there was some deep darkness at the core of this place. And it might not be the type I could afford to cross. So why stick my neck out like this? I was putting a lot of skin in this game. But there was no need. It was a big country. There are plenty of smaller, risk-free fish to go after. Look at it, 100% logically, there was no need to go in deep like this. Ah, well. Gamblers weren't really logical, were they? Like I said, I was hungry. Enough of the hesitation. It was just pre-game pre jitters talking. I was smarter than just about anybody in this hellhole. A deeper darkness. Since when did I get so dramatic? No, no, no. Every rube walking these streets showed their hunger on their sleeve. As long as I kept those hungers in mind, I'd be fine. Worst comes to worst, I'd just flee town. I was good at that, at least. I stopped leaning against the glass and resumed my walk. I was really close to the destination. No, Nohoy's Nest. There was no big billboard advertising the location, or flashy colors. Just a humble wooden sign. That's all the advertising a place like this needed. As I approached, a man swung with the door. Oh. Looked like he was leaving in an incredibly sour mood. I could hear him cursing under his breath. A few steps behind him, some blonde was also leaving. However, she was walking in the other direction. And she, had dis and she had a distinct smile plastered on her face. A familiar smile. That's a story. But if I stopped for every story I came across in this town, I'd never get anything done. As I entered Nahoy's, I could hear the bell attached to the doorframe ring. New customer. The restaurant was nice. A quaint little place. It'll cramp, but that was fine. A couple wooden tables, some chairs, neat candle lighting. Some old posters of... musicals, were they? they? had some signatures. Clearly something the owner felt passionate about. What was most notable was how the restaurant seemed to be empty. 
Usually this place had at least one legit customer ordering something. Must be a slow night. Alright. Enough pussyfooting about. Well, I walked up to the receptionist. Hey, Mickey. What's up? Hey, Locke? How's it hanging? I'm doing okay, Locke. You? I'm, uh... You know. I'm doing... Sorry to hear that. I just say there's a reason I came here. But you must get that a lot. More often than I like. Oh, don't mind me. I don't intend to be a nuisance. That's the thing about nuisances. They, ra they rarely intend to be them. How oh, you wound me, Mick. Seriously. You know me. I know a lot of nuisances. The way this conversation is going, I'm starting to think you're a nuisance yourself. Hey, I don't get a lot of company up here. I like conversation when I can get it. Well, that's why you should like me. I always give you some good conversation when I swing around. That's true enough. Well, then what are you here for? You actually in the mood for a meal? I'm here for the same reason I'm always here. Because I'm hungry. Look, you realize that doesn't actually answer my question. Mickey, have I ever been here for actual food? I don't know, you can start. Our service is actually pretty good, I'll have you know. Yeah, well, no arguments there. But no, you know why I'm here. Mind letting me down? Without the password? Isn't the password reserved for newbies? Not regulars like yours, truly? Password is the password. You need it to enter. Rules are rules. Jeez, you're killing me. Why, do you think someone's gonna be able to just disguise themselves as me? Just say the thing, dude. I'm... I bit myself against yourself. Alright, this way. Receptionist gave me a nod and started moving to a nearby door with a big employees only sign. A sign that was disobeyed almost 100% of the time. I followed into the room. Looking around one last time to make sure nobody was looking in through a window. Not that it'd be my responsibility if somebody saw this. The light was already on in the closet of a room. At first brush, it just looked like a room for storage. Then Mickey pushed it on a specific plank on the left wall. And that plank pushed in. And with it, followed the wall. A reasonably disguised secret tunnel. As soon as he went down that rabbit hole, however, the entire vibe changed. It wasn't suddenly fancy or anything. The wood turned, just turned to stone, draped with furs. It was dark, it was dark blue. Then dark green. Then dark purple. Indeed, the light slowly pulsated between the cool colors, creating a surreal atmosphere. Now we're in a club atmosphere get behind this. I finished walking down the stairs and nodded, nodded to Mickey as he began to, look, began to return to his post. This was the real noise nest. Biggest and best underground casino in all of Panthea. It was one of the few places blind to riches in the city. Rich? Poor? Middle of the road? All work welcome if you're willing to keep a secret. No place for elitism here. This was the only place you could really let your gambling spirit run wild. You couldn't afford to be choosy. Which is why you saw so many big spenders living it up in a dingy underground lair. Concrete walls decorated with crude posters. Tacky fur carpeting. Dance music filled the air, albeit at a lower volume than might be expected. They had some pretty good sound insulation, but if you're running against if you're running an owner underground operation, you can't be blasting tunes at full volume. But you couldn't complain to the owner if you wanted to stay there. If they took complaints, they definitely didn't do so they definitely do something about the lighting. I don't know I didn't know anybody who appreciated the lighting, consisting of low pulsating colored lights and a single disco ball. Oh wait, I did know one person. Me. No. 
I mean, apart from the practical aspect of it, I kind of just kind of dug the style of it for its own right. Not many places like this. Places packed with elation and sorrow. You just like it. You just like it locked because you fit in here with your tacky purple suit. Where some were looking for a good time and some were looking to make money. Where all were living a life of vague illegality. Comfortable blend of illegality, for that matter. This wasn't a hole for hardened criminals. If the police ever busted this place, it's unlikely many changes would stick. Illegal in the, illegal in the literal sense. It wasn't legal. That added an extra sense of tension upon everything else. This was my kingdom. These were, these were my people. My gut instinct was to immediately hit up one of the tables. But hey, let's take it easy now. Good night out started with drinks. For now, I just hit up the bar. Made my way over, and luckily at that moment, I was the only one getting a drink. That meant I could have a private chat with the bartender. I like talking with Osa. A shame he didn't like me. Lock. Hmm. Hey, hey, whoa, what's that reaction about? Acknowledging that you're here. Yeah, here to give your bar some much needed patronage. My bar has been doing just fine, thank you. As has my casino. Also, it wasn't just the bartender, he was also the pit boss and the owner of this whole franchise. Nice. Well, owner. Anyways, some people might think that the owner acting as a bartender is a little odd. And they'd be right. And all things considered, this was a small outfit. Private rooms aside, the bar had a view of the entire casino, so Osa could multitask. Besides, according to him, he enjoys the act of bartending. So what'll it be, Locke? Have any suggestions? Yeah. My most expensive drink. Oh, you. Oh, I guess just give me some meth vodka. This, Osa raised an, raised an eyebrow. What? What? Nothing, nothing. You intend on actually doing some gambling tonight? Obviously, or else I'd, or else I'd go to a bar, not a casino. Then I'm, just, then I'm just curious why you're starting with myth. What can I say? I like me some vodka. Besides, I've got high alcohol tolerance. And I do my best work when I'm just a bit tipsy. At this, I winked at Osa. He saw this gesture, he gave no sign of it. Instead, he slowly turned around and reached for the drink I had asked for. He made no rush in filling up my shot. Osa wasn't exactly a fast mover. Another reason why I was grateful to have his undivided attention. When he handed me the glass, I toasted him, then immediately downed the shot. That's the way to do it. Ah, the spot. I'll give you this. You're a unique drinker. That's the best compliment you could give me. Now that, now that that's done, just give me a glass of some beer. Dealer's choice. Just want something to sip for a bit. If that's what you want. Osa shrugged and turned back towards the rack. You know, you've been showing up here a lot lately. I'd have thought, I'd have thought that'd make you the least bit grateful. Me? Grateful to one of my customers? Alright, well, bad word choice on my part. Just fucking, I don't know. Less outwardly hostile. I really don't feel any particular way about you. It makes you feel better. I've been told by my friends that I give off a, off a hostile air. I believe it. I only ask because your nightly visits have stood out to me. You strike me as the type to have a life. Implying that people who show up at your casino this often don't have lives, huh? Possibly. Once again, I got the feeling that Osa had a real resentment towards his own clientele. 
damn straight I have a life, buddy. Gambling is my life. That inspires so much confidence. I had to pause the video for a second, but this theme is... I'm digging it. Hmm. Maybe I'm not being clear enough. You seem to have a lot of money to throw around. What can I say? I'm a good gambler. Not that good. I've kept track of your games. You don't really... You don't win nearly enough to make a profit. Well, who said my winnings are from here? You're not helping your case. Hmm, what are we after? How do you figure that? You and I both know that you don't make big bucks from gambling on a whim. You don't even make big bucks from being skilled. If you're saying that you made it big from some previous gamble from wherever you came from, then either you're a miraculous idiot, I also placed my glass of beer down on the counter with a bit of force. Or you swindled that money. I also gave me a bit of a stare. I didn't break eye contact as I grabbed the beer and took a sip. What can I say, mon ami? I'm adored by many ladies. Miss Luck is just one of my conquests. I didn't know him better. I would have thought Osa just rolled his eyes like a teenage girl. I'm just saying, you better not be causing any trouble. You know what I do to cheaters, right? Osa, the dried blood on your knuckle tells the story far better than you could. At this, Osa just grunted and went back to polishing another empty glass. I intended to make some more small talk. However, before I said anything, my eyes were drawn to the events playing out at the poker table behind me. Oh shit. Hi, Polly. Fuck off! The sound of a glass being slammed onto the table echoed throughout the place. Oh, this is gonna be good. Standing on the one at, standing on one end of the table was Polly Despa, troubled heir extraordinaire. That dude was as good a propaganda machine against his family's company as their god. He seemed to trip into scandals at every possible opportunity. His family seemed to equally treat him as a complete disgrace. Oh, hello. On the other side of the table was a face I wasn't familiar with. It was the red-headed chick looking reasonably frightened. The girl was pretty attractive, wearing some oversized glasses and a fashionable outfit. The stacks of cash sitting on her side of the table was also a plus. Behind her was her friend, wearing a slightly odd denim outfit. She looked less scared and more pissed off. Though not nearly as angry as Polly was. You already gotta just go into a casino and cheat people. Well, not this guy, honey. I'm not... I'm not another one of your stooges. Um, I'm sorry, but I don't think... I don't know what you're talking about. I get being upset. I did take a lot of your money. But you bet it. I don't care about the money. I don't give two shits about the money. Fuck money. <laughs> what I care about is that you've got the gall to try and cheat me. Cheat you? What do you mean? I was really sure I followed all the rules. We went over it so many times. No use hollering there, Polly. You were in the hoist nest where the rules are king. If it's legal, hell if it's illegal, but if it's not caught, then it'll fly and be enforced. No, uh, 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 no you don't. I'm a fucking god of this stupid star game. I know for a fact that you don't make the moves you make. Unless you know what the other person had. And the only way that works is if you mark the cards. You're saying my moves didn't make sense? Well, darn, I put a lot of thought into them, too. Looks like I got lucky, don't you think? Polly's eyes flared with rage. The redhead was not helping her case. By the bar, I noticed Osa cracking his knuckles. Oh boy, were we about to get some real action in here? In here? However, before the fun could begin, another person made a move. Boy, dipshit. Think that? Think that's enough of that? Hi, Jar. A random girl beat Osa to the punch, figuratively and literally. She looked a little, a little familiar. So at first, I thought I might have known her. However, I probably would have remembered some encountering someone with hair dyed so bright pink. Oh, for well, fuck's sake, Jar! I'm in the middle of something right here. You're in the middle of making a right ass of yourself. Let's get out of here. 
Well, what? Do you want to be on tomorrow's front page as well? Really trying to give your brother more ammo? Think I give a shit about what that dickhead thinks. Put me on a month's worth of newspapers for all I care. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Much as I'd love to watch you self-destruct, you got a promise to keep and some work to do. That means waking up at a reasonable time. It means getting out of this bog. Go gave Polly another tug, and this time Polly stumbled backwards with it. Fine, fine, fine. Good time for me. Before leaving, however, Polly turned back around. Don't think I'm forgiving, forgetting you, though, you cheat. These little scabs are going to catch up to you one day, you hear me? Um? At this, the girl gave Polly one more push toward the stairs. Real sorry about him. He probably didn't mean it, he's just proper buzzed. Oh, it's okay, really. I mean, it's not your fault or anything. Well, it's my job to make him sure, make sure he's not faffing about like about in places like this. Oh, there they is a little bit. Be seeing ya. With that, the girl followed Polly back up the stairs and out of the casino. The situation resolved, people began to look elsewhere. The scene had come and went. Well, that was a show, wasn't it? Hmm. Oh? You look unenthused. Right. Really, you didn't get any enjoyment out of that. When you're in my line of work for, for long enough, scenes like that are too common to be interesting. Isn't that the sad truth? Good thing for the prince that his girl came back, came and bailed him out as soon enough. Things would have gotten real ugly for him had he kept pushing it. Ugly for him? I was a little surprised, but upon further thought, it made sense. Moose was about to step in before the fight got broken up. Moose had planned to take the redhead's son. Plan on putting that rich kid, rich prick through the ringer, eh? Not if I can help it. Not if I can help it. Now what on earth did that mean? Considered asking him for a bit more info. Ever before I got the chance, I lost my privilege of being the only customer of Osa's. Oh! If you're guessing that that Borkin disaster would have lost a fight lost a fight to glasses, then I'd have to agree. Hi, Kane. Also, scotch whis scotch whiskey, please. I also just grunted at this. If he had disdain towards me, he hated this joker. And fair enough. Who the hell like Kane? <laughs> Governor Aisha, maybe. Really? For everyone else with half a brain, the Oracle was nothing but pro-state propaganda. Ah. And the head of it, Kane Shea, a limp dick puppet. <laughs> well, I'm sure he had his fans. He didn't get to be the de facto source for news without any approval. But you weren't likely to find his fans in a place like this. Maybe you wonder why he even bothered showing his face in a place like this. Maybe the dude was a masochist. Or secretly self-hating. Maybe he was a real gambling junkie, desperate to get his fix. Though I sort of doubted that last possibility. Walk a disaster, huh? Is that what you call Polly Desma? What, you disagree with me? Not particularly. Just surprised that's the nickname you'd give him. And why is that? Didn't you recently do a puff piece for Olympo? I'd have thought you were on their side. Or all the opinions you put out complete, ho complete hollow horseshit. I take it you're aware of me. Most around these parts are. Huh. Unfortunately, I'm afraid I can't say the same. You are? Lock. Lock, then. Kane offered a handshake. It felt a bit weird to take it, but flat out rejecting it felt a bit rude. For the record, unlike a lot of reporters, I do at least actually stand by everything I write. And yeah, I back Olympo. I don't back Polly Desma. Fair enough, that is distinction. That guy's a mess, entitled little shit who hasn't done an honest day's work in his life. He's a poster child for the worst type of rich person. So you're saying there's a good type? Ah. Alright, maybe you got me there. That non-response let me know that yes, indeed, this guy probably did think that. 
was savvy enough to know that this wasn't the environment for that sort of talk. I was in a confrontational mood, however. Seriously, why back a limpo in the first place? I mean, okay, maybe you don't care about them hurting local businesses. Iron Fist of the Free Market, blah blah blah. Our big faceless corporation with a thousand branches that stands for nothing. Why go to bat for them? I wouldn't say I go to bat for them. Really? Look, there's some upsides to housing a big company like that. What? That we're gonna have a, that we're gonna have a sneak peek to the real life version of every sci-fi movie for the rest of the country? That Panthea offers something. A thriving community of low-level mom-and-pop shops is nothing on a national level. A home based one of the largest companies in the country is something. Maybe you're right that Olympo takes a lot of small a lot of small stacks, knocks them over and makes a big stack. I say good. People only take note of a big stack. Hmm. Hashtag support small businesses. Seriously do it. Buy a local one if you can. If you can. Not everyone's in that good of a position financially to do so, but if you are, by all means, support them. Am I too drunk? Was there the faintest hint of being impressed in that grunt? Judging by the fact that you've already gotten two refills, yeah, I'd wager you're too drunk. Yeah, at least that's an opinion. That sure is an opinion. That is a collection of words. That holds meaning. And all that jazz. More than I, more than I expected from you, for, to be honest. Well, here's to define expectations. Kane toasted me, went back to drinking. Alright then, so ask me this. Why do you give a shit about how Panthea comes across on the national stage? How's that factor into anything? Oh, I don't know, a little something called citywide pride? Why can't we be proud of what comes from within us? Pride for Panthea, is it? This is the wagon you want to hit yourself to. Matter of fact, I do. I really do. I care quite a lot about Panthea. More than most of these jackasses. You know, my grandfather was a politician. It was a decent part in leading Panthea into something that halfway resembles a decent city. If you're that into uplifting Panthea, why not go into politics yourself? Yeah, well... Given my parental situation, I don't think that's really an option for me. Parental situation? Tried racking my brain. Oh, right. I vaguely remembered something about Kane's father. I wanted to say that he killed his mother, but to be honest, I wasn't 100% on the situation, and this didn't feel like the sort of thing I wanted to guess on. But yeah, when criticizing Kane, a lot of people jumped at making remarks about his dad. That always felt needlessly cruel. Hate to hate the guy for all. Hate the guy all you want, but don't drag some trauma like that into things. Yeah, I guess that's true. Sorry about that, for what it's worth. Eh, it's fine. It's whatever. Probably a dead end from the start anyways. After all, it doesn't look like I'm gonna be, look like I'm gonna be winning po popularity contests anytime soon, and that's without becoming a politician. Huh, you got me there. Took a sip of my beer, then continued, the continued my line of questioning. So what, you think journalist is best way to help out Panthea? It's a bit more to why I chose my occupation than that lock, but it certainly doesn't hurt. I lowered my voice a bit. If you love Panthea so much, then why not point out the threat that the Duods pose? Downplaying it seems like it's going to hurt the city in the long run. I don't know what you're talking about. If you're, refer if you're referencing me, mentioning the c crimes been at an all-time low, I'm not wrong. Oh, don't give me that. You know that's not a good way of representing things, isn't it? Again, I think you're assuming insincerity when I'm being straight as a fucking arrow. I'm in favor of the duots. You're... what? Look, I don't know you. 
I'm guessing you don't remember what things were like back when the Shika, back when the Shiko Mei were around, or any of the other freak shows. Man, they used to be scarred. War zone. Now at least there's some order. I wanted to rebut that. But he was right. I wasn't around for the Shikome. I didn't even know who they were. I got the sense I disagreed with Kane. I also got the sense that he knew more about wh what he was talking about than I did. So I decided to just continue nursing my beer. After a brief bout of silence, Kane spoke up. You know, I didn't come here to talk politics. I came here to forget about it. So why don't you and me have a little bit of fun, eh? I'm flattered, but I don't usually do hookups in a place like this. God, I'm talking about gambling, fuckface. I'm saying we should settle things the way we, the way they should be, over cards. Or what? You're too chicken to actually gamble yourself. I checked my watch. An obvious knockoff of an expensive brand. There was still plenty of time to kill. And it could be fun fleecing this fool of some cash. Alright, what the hell. I didn't come to drink, I came to gamble. I'll take you up on that offer. Ah, now that's what I like to hear. Let me finish this drink first and we'll get right to it. Oh boy. Both of us finished our beverages, paid, and stood up. Then we made our way to the made our way to the main floor, looking for an appropriate place for our match to begin. So you figure we both just sit in at a poker table or something? Ah, that shit's boring. Let's face off at one of the private tables. Do it yourself. Nahoy's nest was a bit of an unorthodox setup. Unlike a lot of casinos, there weren't too many tables manned by actual dealers. I mean, there were a fair few. There were just as many empty tables with nothing but chairs and general gambling equipment. This was for anyone looking for more individualized or personal gambles. Mr. Polly Daysman was made a fool at one of those tables just a short while ago. It was a bit of an odd setup, much like a lot of things about this place, but again, I liked it. In my head, gambles should be clashes of will between the players. Dealers in generic games like blackjack and poker didn't hold much appeal in my eyes. Two of us made our way to a private table and stood on opposite ends. So, are we playing for money or what? I make it a policy to always gamble for money, no matter how small. I reached in my pocket for my wallet and took out two fifties. Starting fee's a hundred dollars. A hundred dollars for a starting fee? Kane looked a little startled, startled at this proclamation. First I thought someone with a big shot job like being the head of the Oracle must be raking it in. But looking at, looking at his attire, it dawned on me that Kate might be a lot less rich than I'd initially thought. The slightest ounce of guilt broke through. Hey, you know what? I think I should say something. Oh? I mean, I'm looking, but I'm actually something of a pro in this area. Oh, you look it. Uh, thanks? Point is, I don't know what you were expecting, but I'm no chump. If you're playing to win, I'd temper those expectations. If losing $100 would hurt, then maybe we toned down those stakes. This peace offering didn't go over well. Saying it aloud, I realized it sounded a little more insulting than I'd intended. Yeah, that is very. That's very, uh. Ah, shit. You're not wrong there, Locke. Kane's face morphed into a scowl. Being honest, this one was my bad. Sometimes in life, things just came out wrong. This was one of those times. Kane reached into his pocket. Before I knew it, he had taken out four $50 bills. I'll double it. And yeah, I am sure, so cough it up or you're so cocky. Couldn't say I blamed him for this reaction. I sort of provoked him. But I also warned him. If he was going to slam down $200, I wasn't going to look a gift horse in the mouth. Reached back to my wallet and scrounged up another hundred. Sounds good to me. They'll even let you choose what we'll be playing. Well, thanks. Kane took a second to think, then had an idea. Let's play two truths and a two truths and a lie. Here's the thing, Lock, my friend. I know your type well enough. That's so. Uh, you're doing a number of my you're doing a number doing a number on my feelings right now, you know. Oh, my deepest apologies. Anyways, I just don't feel great about any sort of standard game against you. Feel like you're likely to rake 
likely to rake me across the coals, and even though I just made a big deal of making, a real, making it a real bet, I think my wallet's been a little light lately. More than that, I think I'm just too prideful to lose to someone like you. Again, the like you remark really isn't necessary, man. But fine, what do you have in mind? I think you're a shark. So then, I think it's fair to play a game that tests just how good a shark you are. A part of me wanted to object to Kane's assessment of my character, right as it may be. A greater part of me was interested as to just what he's about to propose. So the gamble I'm proposing, I'm gonna call it Monkey See, Monkey Do. What? I had to give it a catchy name, huh? Every good game has a catchy name. Every good article, maybe. I suppose you're more the authority on games than me. Still, I came up with it, so I get to name it. I'm less interested in the name, more in what the hell you're planning on having us do. I'm getting there, I'm getting there. It's really simple. I'm about to make you a very simple bet. Painfully simple. I'm gonna let you see my whole process. And spoiler, I'm gonna win it. You've just gotta do the same back to me. And to be clear, this ain't some trick where you need to fold your tongue seven times to win it or something. Because if it's like that, I don't see the point in this. No, no, no. I'm trying to be sporting with this. The little trick I'm gonna do is something you could that you very easily could pair it back to me. Incredibly so. I just think you won't be able to. Oh, this prick. He wasn't just being haphazard right now. He was trying to hit me where it hurt. He decided to forego typical games and make it a challenge to my ego. Figured I thought myself sharp and he'd use this to take me down a peg. This cane's more vicious than I initially had him for. Still, he made a decent mistake. I didn't think myself sharp. I was sharp. Sharper than anything this hack had up his sleeve at any rate. Sounds fun. Unfair, but that's fine. I need a handicap. Ha ha ha! Ah yeah, it's gonna be like that? Okay, okay. You'll change your tune soon enough. Sounds to me like you're agreeing to these rules. Sure, what the hell. Great. The smirk came to the kind of deck of cards. Casually shook them out of their container. Now see, if I was some sort of third main magician, this is where I'd do a false shuffle or some shit. Three problems with that approach, then. I'm not a third main magician. I'm about three beers past having many sort of physical dexterity in my hands. I know that sort of trick isn't going to win me any favors. We just assumed the deck was stacked and emulated. Correct. So I'll just go as is. Kane then took out a worn-out journal from his pocket, along with a pen. He tore a page from it, and then scribbled something down. Finally, he folded up the page and smacked it down in the center of the table. We'll get to that in a minute. Now grab a couple of cards off the top of this deck. Does it matter how many? It'd be best for the both, for the both of us if you grabbed less cards than you had fingers. But you know, you do you. Part of me have wanted to try and deliberately throw a wrench into his plans. That wasn't sporting. I'd like, and I was taking on this bet for fun. I grabbed a handful of cards off the top. Cool, cool. You know, Locke, I have a little number philosophy. A number philosophy. The fuck's that? There's a little superstition about numbers. You don't have anything like that? I'm not a nerd, no. Don't be a jackass. Anyone who spent his enough time doing math in school, staring at numbers, began to think about them just a little. Didn't do a lot of thinking on the whole at school. I can tell. Oof. Anyway, I really like the number nine. I think there's some real power in it. They say three is the magic number, but for me, I think nine holds some real answers. It's three threes. Like what's this? Kane began placing cards down on the table in front of us, one by one, right to left. Eventually, he had nine in a row. If you ask the nine nicely, they'll tell you what you need to know. I bet you I can prove that right now. See, look at this. Kate then reached over and grabbed the sheet of paper he had written on earlier. He displayed it. The King of Spades hides the nine. The number of cards Locke drew gives the answer. 
Without me? Isn't that something? That it is. I had a sinking feeling that I knew where this was going. Well then, Locke, how many cards do you have there? I spread out the cards in my hand. Turns out I had drawn six. Six, huh? All right then. King counted out six cards left to right and ended up hovering his finger above a certain card. Now it'd be pretty cool if this was the King of Spades, don't you think? If the card jackass, then get it over with. Let's try and have a bit of fun with it. With a huff, Kane flipped over the card. Sure enough, King of Spades. Alrighty then, your turn. Kane swept up all the cards and handed the deck to me. I'll give you a moment. He tore out another sheet of paper and handed me a pen. I had to admit, it was a good little parlor trick. But that's what it was. A magic trick. A type laid out in a middle schooler's magic book. Surely, surely I could handle something this simple myself. So let's focus. First of all, let's stack the deck so I knew the order of the cards. Made the top card the Ace of Clubs. Next with the Ace of Diamonds, Ace of Hearts, Ace of Spades. Then came the Two of Clubs, Two of Diamonds, Two of Hearts, Two of Spades. And so on and so forth in that pattern. Kane had pretty much admitted his deck was prearranged, so this should be within the rules. As I took the time to do this, I thought carefully about everything. I watched closely, and there wasn't any sleight of hand bullshit when Kane was sweeping the cards together. There's only one King of Spades. The note was also written from the start. That was never switched. It wasn't written after the fact. What did Kane do in the trick? I wrote down the note. Pick some cards from the top of the deck. I laid out the top nine cards of the deck, right to left. And he spouted some bullshit and opened the note. I counted the cards equal to how many I drew and laid it on the pre-selected card. Think about it that way. First thing I needed to do in this trick was write the note. Oh boy. So, uh, here's my prediction. Watch closely or whatever. Picked up the pen and thought. I wasn't doing sleight of hand, I can confirm that. So, what happened? Hey there! Just your local neighborhood EZ popping in with another minigame tutorial. We all know how this goes by now, so I'm just gonna get into it. Sometimes you need to think about things. Oh boy. I know. Scary. But it doesn't have to be. Look, here's the deal. See that little doohickey in the top left corner? That's your brain button. BB for short. As you go through a logical series of thoughts, you might encounter words written in the light blue text. These words are a thought you're actively, deli actively deliberating. If you press the BB with those words to show up, you'll rearrange your thoughts to cycle through some other possibilities. If you to take some time, go through your options. When you feel like you've got a solid train of thought, train of logic going, just continue along with your thinking, like you would at any other time. Worst comes to worst, you get it wrong, you're an idiot, you get booted back to the first point your logic started to the first the first point your logic started to mess up, everybody hates you. Low stakes. And that's what it for logic, at least for now. Pretty simple, right? Right. This doesn't necessarily mean it's easy. The difficulty of the train of logic, that's pretty variable. It depends on how hard you want this to be. So, uh, how hard do you want this to be? Crank up the hard. All right, Captain, the hard thruster set to 11. Hope you can handle that. I hope you're content with getting seven chips each time you complete a logic minigame, because that's the most we can give. Hope oh, I don't get complacent. If you go down an incorrect train of logic, that payout dips by a chip. Alright then, well, that's sort of everything I have to cover. I don't have a lot of witty commentary here. Guess I'll just let you get to it then. Good luck logicking. Okay, so what did I know? I chose a card. Can't predict it. How's that possible? How much information did he have to work with? In other words, when did he know that what card I'd ended up landing on? Was it from the very start? After I drew a number of cards? Yeah, that makes some sense, right? 
At that point, he knew how many cards I drew. The deck was stacked, he'd know the nine cards we was about to deal. And there, all it takes was some simple math con on his part to figure out the card I'd end up, I'd end up with. But wait. In that case, how did he already have the card written down? Shit, what? Oh, shit. So, how is that possible? Wait, when did... I've been actually dealt out the cards, right? Yeah, that makes some sense, right? Before he knew how many cards I drew, he knew what cards were on the table. If the deck was stacked, he'd know what card I'd end up landing on. Wait. Where? Hold the phone. I don't follow this, but... Right. As he wrote down, a wrote down a card from the very start, he must have already known... Always known what card I'd end up with. The thing I don't understand about the way the opening of this is written is that, like, the whole point of the trick is to find the King of Spades of the Nine, right? So the deck is stacked in some way where... Once you... You get the uh, player to... Draw some something less less than ten cards. You deal nine cards. The deck is arranged in a way that depending on how many cards the uh, I guess it would make sense from the beginning then. But just the way this is written doesn't make sense. I suppose he would have known from the beginning. Because of how the trick is arranged. Stacked in a way that, depending on the number of cards that you, the player, draw, he can then predict where in the nine cards that he dealt the King of Spades is. Like, it's not particularly subtle, even. I mean, randomly ending up with the King of Spades? No, that card is too much possess factor. Was specifically chosen. Oh, okay. Thought that was obvious, so. Okay, well, never mind. The point of this was just to get to that point. So, alright. Kane knew the key card from the start. How? Well, how is the key card selected? I chose a random amount of cards from the, off the top of the deck, then nine cards were dealt based on the number of cards I picked. The card amongst the nine dealt was selected. Pretty clear cut summary of events. Was I laboring under a misconception? Think about it, I'm not sure if I had a free choice in how many cards I drew. I'm not sure if I had a free choice in how many cards I drew. That is a lie. was fixed from the start. Mm -hmm. How many cards I drew? Okay, this this seems right. I'm trying to go based on the uh, logic of what we've been told so far. How the, or at least how this has been written so far. How many cards I drew actually changed which card we selected? I mean, the two seem related. At the same time, doesn't the number of cards I draw directly affect which cards were dealt? I mean, both sets of cards come off the top. So for every card I draw, that's one card that isn't going on the table. Hmm. 
need a picture of how the card specifically moved if I wanted to see through this trick. The real key to this trick was the magic number 9. When I draw cards, when Kane dealt cards. Hmm. Dealt and counted cards in the opposite direction. counted cards in the same direction, then it really would be impossible to predict much of anything. I kept that fact in mind. Look, let's reframe our thinking to center around the position of this key card known from the start. Every, draw every card I drew is a card not being placed to the right. Every therefore, every card I drew essentially shifted the key card one to the right. However, the number of cards came kind of was equal to the number of cards I drew. Card I drew, Kane would count one more from the left. The card counted can, in essence, be removed. So I could treat it as though for every card I drew, I was also shifting the key card one to the left. But if for every card I drew, the key card shifted both one to the right and one to the left, then no matter how many I drew, I wasn't shifting the key card's position at all. Ah, Kane, you lazy, sneaky bastard. Came to be with a trick this basic? A trick that ran itself? That crumbled under any scrutiny? Tisk tisk. Well, thanks for making it easy for me to replicate your trick. The key card would always be the ninth card of the deck. Which meant I should write down two of clubs on this sheet of paper. Easy peasy. Aha. Uh -huh. So then. Hey, Kane said I could draw any number of cards from 1 to 9, right? What would have happened if I had drew 9 cards? I mean, that would screw things up, right? If I drew the key card? Oh. Shit. Ah, no. Bollocks. Let's at least see what happens down this path. I mean, Kane need to know how many cards I drew. That was central to this trick. If he dealt the cards, well, the trick ran itself. Something must have happened in that time period. So what happened then? Did anything happen in that time period? Actually, thinking back, I'm pretty sure Kane started dealing cards right after I drew them, as that's dead end. Shit! Bollocks! So what means that magic- what's the magic number 9, then? Number 9 had some super important mathematical quality that made it all possible. What exactly that quality was, I wasn't- I was unsure. I mean, that had to be it, right? For the sake of thought, what would have happened had the magic number been 10? Would much have changed? Nothing I could think of. Shit! Oh no. I'm really on the wrong road now. This is not working out. I'm an idiot, I completely missed the section here. I missed a, uh, yeah. Not ninth card. It'd be the tenth card. The conclusion was simple. The number of cards Kane would deal was nine. I drew only one card. Key card would still need to have would still need to have been dealt. Alternatively, if I drew nine cards, I couldn't be able to draw the key card. With those two pieces of information in mind, the key card must have been the tenth one from the top of the deck. It was 
probably a smarter way of going about that, but hey, if it works, right? Yeah! I wrote three of hearts on the paper. I proceeded to follow the steps. I out the cards, dealt them, counted backwards. Wouldn't you know it, my prediction came out correct. Looks like victory goes to me. Poor Ken could complain, as he was in, as he was inevitably wont to do. I reached forward and snatched the money from Kane's side of the table. As expected, he tried to grab my arm. Too slow, dude. Come on, you must have had something better than that for me. You little shit. Kane, on the other hand, Kane, on the other hand, was actually quite irritated. I didn't get it, to be quite honest. Why was he taking this so personally? If he really wanted to win, he shouldn't have picked such a baby magic trick. If he wanted to win, he could have. He could have, but he didn't. Because I assumed he wanted this to be a sporting competition. So why get this upset? What's your problem, man? It was your gamble. Yeah, and you won. Oh, my apologies. I should have thrown it. Asshole. Because I didn't ex anticipate you being this experienced of a cheater. Seriously? How are you gonna say I cheated? I don't know, that's what makes you, that's what makes you a good cheater. I was frankly a little stunned. The nerve of Kane. I was also starting to hear the slur in his words. I might have been more drunk than I thought. I might have been a worse drunk than he thought. I was playing nice with you. We treated like this. You know what? Fine. You think I cheated? Let's switch rules real quick. We'll grab the deck of cards and begin shuffling it. We're going to do the exact same thing. I'll let you go first, then I'll go. If you can do it, or I can't, you get your money back. I'll even throw my half of the bet in as well. Really? Yeah. I'm doing this I'm doing this just to teach a lesson. <laughs> Cocky shit. I'm gonna teach you to get out of here. Get out when you're ahead. I wasn't even grateful for giving him a second chance. Whatever. So just kicking someone when they were down. I didn't like to do it, but Kane had made me a worse person than usual. Alright then, hope you have a good memory. Reached into the middle I reached into the middle of the deck of cards and grabbed a random one. I slid it out of the pile, leaving it face down on the table nearby. Neither of us know what that card is. Don't bother arguing with me about it, just trust me. I don't care enough about this pity bound to be cheating. I flipped the top card of the deck face up. Now keep up. Flip the next card, placing it atop the first. Then the next. Then the next. Flip from card to card in quick succession. Once you had a diegetic memory, it was impossible to remember all these cards. Luckily, I didn't have to. I was just adding the numbers displayed up in my head and dropping the tens digit. Four. A five, which made it nine. An eight, which made it seventeen, which made it seven. A jack, which kept it seven. Flip. 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 Finally, I got to the bottom of the deck. I flipped through all the cards. The count was at seven. She went the face down card with a three. Ooh. Alright then. What's the face down card? Kane just glared at me. You're kidding me. Process of elimination, my dude. If you were smart enough, you'd get it. Oh, fuck off. Here, I'll even make it easier for you. Flipped over the deck of cards and spread them all out. Give you 15 seconds to look at this and guess. I wasn't letting him look through the cards. I was looking through the cards myself. Specifically, searching for the threes. They have diamonds, they have spades, they have clubs. Got it. Fuck it. Five of clubs. Seriously? That was pretty close, considering it was probably just some guess he pulled out of his ass. Kane had some decent luck on his side. Afraid not, my friend. Put my hand over the face down card. Three of clubs. Flipped it, and voila. Three of clubs. I don't know what reaction I was expecting. Kane beginning to chuckle to himself. Suppose that was around the middle of the scale. <laughs> and all right. All right, all right, all right. Fair play. Better than I gave you credit for, Locke. Thanks, I guess. That's a compliment, don't worry. You know, you've got my attention. I'll keep an eye out for you. 
I tend to hang around dingy pits like this a lot, so if you come by some night, there's decent odds you'll spot me. I think I might do just... I might think I might just do that. Cause I'm a sore loser. I want a rematch, at a real game. I'd be happy to oblige, Kane, happy to oblige. That is if you have a hundred dollars on you. <laughs> Will do. It's an oddly jovial note to end on. Well... That was an impressive trick. That was an impressive trick. Especially hearing the uh, actual facts behind it. My mind briefly retraced the steps I took with Kane to get to this point. We really went all over the place, emotionally speaking. I guess we were landing on a sense of grudging respect? To reveal, I don't know how much I actually respected him. On the other hand, this was definitely a useful connection to have. So sure, grudging respect. We can go with that. This was the thought process interrupted by my eyes catching a very specific person. The man I saw certainly couldn't be described as a head-turner. Oh! In a lot of ways, he was pretty unassuming. Low-key suit, short black hair, unassuming build. It was hard to even recognize him with the, with the lighting and the atmosphere and everything. But no. That was him. It was 100%, without a doubt, Bach. Man, my luck. Wow. Well, this was fun, but I think I'm going to go look for another gamble. Less personalized one, just blackjack or something. Cool, cool, you have fun, man. Me, I think I've had my daily dose of escapism. Probably best to leave Wonderland and get back on the grind. You do that. Thanks for the company. Don't mention it. Thanks for the 200 bucks. With that, Kane began to walk away. So did I. Not to a blackjack table, like I said. Just to a spare wall. I needed to compose myself before moving any further. Checked my watch. Right on time. Finally, Bach showed up. I was wondering earlier if this was going to be... This was going to the Knights. I just... I was wondering earlier if this was going to the night things were do and die. Back then, it was just a hypothetical. But now? I'm not sure what that sentence was. By that man, nervously ordering a beer of mimosa, laid eyes on me, the die would truly be cast. One way or another, I couldn't look back or falter. I'd be on a path. So then, did I bail? Did I walk right behind Kane, up those stairs, and out of this hellhole? Did I go get, I go get a normal job? A safe life? A stable, a stable relationship? I felt the weight of my pocket. The weight of the $200 I had taken from Kane. It felt light. Far, far, far too light. Like I said, I was hungry. Too hungry not to put things in a, into action. In some ways, I felt bad for Kane, seeing how much he loved this city. Because that man over there? As unassuming as he might look, he was actually a major player in this whole thing. The type that really shouldn't be spending nights in Nahoy's nest, and yet for whatever reason did. The type whose disposition would regularly lead them to falling prey to people like me. I didn't mean that he was my mark. No, my mark was the city of Panthea itself. And I was going to swindle it for all it was worth. Isn't that a nice little brain teaser to end it on? How do you go about swindling an entire city? Does that mean you swindle each and every member of the city? Because that feels like it needs, like, an institutional level con. Or liberal use of taking credit vis-a-vis -vis butterfly effect. Maybe it means to swindle the city, like, philosophically. Don't even try to ask me what I mean by that. I will not answer. By the way, I'm down for it. I can see it worming your way into the power structure and... Uh, swindling a city by means of getting your claws into several influential members of it, working your way upwards and swindling from everyone involved using these connections that you build to uh, do a deeper inherent damage city. Swindles are fun. Swindles are good. I mean, life's set up to be survival of the fittest. If you get separated from your money, that's on you. If you try to pickpocket someone and get your hand cut off, that's also on you. I'm meaning this in a literal sense, as in you have to deal with the consequences. I don't really care about whose fault it is. I've never had to care. I haven't lost any money or gotten my hand chopped off. 
Yes, I just admire swindlers because of the confidence they have in themselves. To attempt to swindle someone is to challenge their intelligence and to have full faith in your own. I like to think of myself as a pretty smart girl, but I'm not nearly cut out for that level of trickery. I usually end up being a lot more blunt. Proclaim you're going to swindle an entire city. Well, Locke certainly has confidence. I doubt anyone could question that. But I don't know, I struggle to see it. I mean, this dude's picking chump change fights with drunk reporters using half-baked magic tricks. Can he really stand against the gods of Panthea? A, a pantheon of gods, even. But um, tsh. Because between you and me, if this dude wants to position himself against this entire city, he's got another thing coming from him. It just seems unlikely that he'd really be able to pull off what he claims. Well, that's the magic of the swindle, right? Having the impossible occur. I compared Locke to a magician earlier, but he, that's not a bad comparison. The difference between a swindler and a magician is a smidge of honesty. So will Locke pull a rabbit out of a hat? Will he fall flat on his face? Either way, I'll be entertained. He's hoping you are, too. Ooh, all right. Ten chips. We can actually go down into Locke's next route. Locked the bronze lock. How do we get keys? Okay, so that simplifies matters. We've got deduction, we've got logic. We have hacking and we have fighting. That's a very powerful, not yet available logo. I like it. So, we've got our swindler. The feeling this is going to get us into fighting and then hacking. Then we complete our uh, top row quad vecta. All right. I suppose, I suppose it makes sense that each level won't have a bet. Said compared to La compared to Laverna's first episode, Lox was a lot more low key. Laverna gets Laverna gets thrust right into a double murder. So it makes sense that we'd have something juicy to bet on there. But Locke, not so much. Not yet, at least. Which means I can go right into recording another episode. So I won't have to wait on uh, poll results. So we'll do that. Which is good, because I like recording ahead whenever I can. So. A low-key introduction. We get to see our, our boy Kane get swindled. Cain, the righteous pain in the ass. Uh, I hate to make that. I hate to make this comparison. I prefer not to give certain people any more attention than I have to, but. Is Kane the, Dro the Joe Rogan of this, of Panthea? Ponder that. And I'll see you next time. Until then, until then. Thanks for watching.